Hi there, Michael here with a little update. The template tutorial series videos were originally recorded in 2017. As I'm recording this update, it is currently September of 2019. A number of things have changed in the last two years. Designing a template is kind of a continuous process. While working on different films, I found some better ways of doing things, but also technology has advanced. There's new software available. Some things have become easier to do. My personal preferences have changed a bit, and so on. While the rest of my template video series still has a lot of useful information for people wanting to build large orchestral templates, it might be a good idea for you to know how my template is set up at this point a couple of years down the line, and to keep all of this in mind while watching the rest of these videos. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Biggest changes first. Let's look at the software I'm using. I've moved from Cubase to Nuendo. But it's actually not very relevant to these videos because everything that I show you here can be done in either Cubase or Nuendo. Also, I'm now using VE Pro 7. Again, the older version has most of the functionality I need. Version 7 has some nice visual improvements and a few useful time saving features, like a better way to assign automation. VE Pro is more efficient with more instances these days, so I have restructured my instance layout. Mostly it's one instance per library now or sometimes a couple of libraries combined. Like this, I can disable entire instances and offload a lot of the stuff I don't need, which reduces the performance impact and allows me to work with an even lower buffer for less latency. One of the biggest changes in my setup is that I've stopped using Lemur. Lemur forums were offline for ages, which meant that the best resource on how to use Lemur was gone. And then Lemur disappeared from Google Play and became unavailable for Android, which kind of sealed the deal for me. So I've moved on to OpenStage Control, which is an awesome piece of software that does absolutely everything that I need. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a forum post and some really nice tutorials and projects from users, which are a great place to start if you want to look into OpenStage Control. I also posted in that thread and shared a script I made for responsive articulation switching similar to the Lemur setup that I show in my template videos. The developer for OpenStage Control is super helpful and responsive, which I really appreciate. And one last thing, OpenStage Control runs through Chrome, so you can have it on literally any device that can run Chrome, any kind of mobile device or a computer with a touchscreen. All right, that's the software changes covered. Next, the template itself. First, I've started working in surround sound, but some projects that I do are still in stereo, so I made a hybrid template that can work in either. Alternatively, you could use downmixing or upmixing plugins, but I prefer to have more control, so I've come up with some routing schemes that allow me to change which format is exported by changing how my stems are routed. I'll try to make a video about this routing at some point in case anyone's interested. Second, I've split my MIDI instrument outputs so that I have three sets of outputs for different microphone positions. Close mics, main mics, and room or surround mics. I just made a video on this topic as part of my music production tips video series. So if you check that video out, you can find out a bit more info on why I like working like this and all the interesting possibilities that this opens up. But as I promised in that video, here is the technical overview of the routing scheme. Let's look at how I've set up Cinematic Studio solo strings. I'm using three stereo outputs per contact instance, and each mic is going to a different output, close to stereo one, main to stereo two, and room two, stereo three. Each instrument has three stereo channels in VE Pro. You can add two extra channels by clicking the little plus sign on each instrument channel. For output routing, each close mic uses a separate stereo pair, and I sum the main and room mics together per library. In this case, close mics are using outputs 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, while main mics all use outputs 9 and 10, and room mics use outputs 11 and 12. These outputs get sent to Nuendo, where I have the necessary number of outputs active per VE Pro instance. Here they are, the outputs from my Cinematic Studio Solo String instance as they arrive in Nuendo. Close mics for each instrument, plus a main mic and a room mic channel. Next thing that I've changed is that I also decided to mix exclusively with audio files. And once again, some of the reasons for doing this are covered in my other video that I mentioned. To quickly convert MIDI to audio and retain all of my routing schemes, I've set up some buses to print these VE Pro outputs to audio tracks. You can set up new output buses here under Audio Connections. 
I have got 20 of them here, which is plenty if you print one library at a time, which is what I do. Let's go back to the Pro Audio Outputs for Cinematic Studio Solo Strings in the Mixer page. Here you can see that I'm using direct routing to output to two destinations simultaneously. First, they output to these extra output buses that I created. In this case, it's print buses 01 to 06. But in addition, they also output to group tracks that I've created per each library. Having two outputs means that I can simultaneously program and work with MIDI the usual way, but also everything is already set up and routed and ready for printing. And the final piece of the puzzle are the audio print tracks. These are regular stereo audio tracks, and their inputs are set to the corresponding extra output buses that I created earlier. This way you can simply record onto these audio tracks and quickly convert MIDI to audio. Although this is very similar to the render in place function that Nuendo and Cubase have, I find my setup is a bit faster and more convenient to use. The biggest advantage being that these tracks have all of the necessary naming and routing already set up. Automation lanes have been created and I can show or hide these automation lanes at the press of one button. I gave a quick demo on how the printing works in the multi-mic mixing video, but here it is again for reference. Here are some MIDI parts. I select the audio print tracks and record. And done. Now you can mute the MIDI and hide those tracks. And that about covers the things that have changed in the last couple of years. Again, the rest of my template videos still contain lots of useful information on templates, but the changes I've made to my own workflow mean that I'm not necessarily using some of those approaches anymore. Anyway, this has been a brief 2019 update to my template tutorial series. Thanks for watching.